Let's go. Get up, get up, I got the guy going on. What is happening, fellow pioneers of human transportation? I'm Yogi Steve. You're watching ESA, the Electric Scooter Academy. Check out the view. We're in the most northern part of Hollywood you can go before you start going over the hill into the valley. Thanks for joining me. If it's your first time, welcome to the channel. Today I'm out here on my Roadrunner Pro. I'm going to kind of give you an update on what's going on with the model and what's going on with my particular Roadrunner. I'm working pretty close with Vora Motors on this. Make sure you join my Facebook group, eMove or Roadrunner, new users and mods. If you own one of these, if you're thinking about buying one, and you can just check it out if you want to get all the free information on there. So my unit is at 700 miles. I just recently replaced my front tire. I did it on my own. I found a really good source for like $35 tires. I'll link it somewhere if you, you need tires for your Roadrunner. And the installation was pretty easy. But when I did the installation, I did not set the hydraulic brake wire in the right spot and it was rubbing against the tire and I didn't realize that and I blew that line out. So I basically blew out my right side brakes. I didn't use the vehicle for a while and I was gonna have my friend Brian come over and help me install some brakes, but instead I got antsy and I bought like a cheap pair of brakes and I installed them myself. So I'm now out here on a vehicle for the first time ever where I did the brakes. Now, these types of hydraulic brakes, they come like pressurized. The thing that I don't know how to do well is, or haven't figured out really well, is how to like bleed or replace the oil that well in these vehicles. So, um, you know, but since the since this set came with the brakes already, like with pressure in the line, and I know if I could just figure out the rest of it, I'd be okay. So I got everything done except for the fact that I have no motor cutoff wire. You see this here? That's uh, that makes it so you cannot brake and hit the motor at the same time. It's sort of important, but you can live without it, and I'll eventually fix that because it's probably a little dangerous to be riding around like that. But don't forget, I still have my left brakes. Uh, they're completely functional. But the brakes that I put on here are super cheap. So what I've been doing while I'm talking to you is my first time I'm test riding it. I really have no idea if these brakes are gonna last, but let me pull over now and just make sure nothing came loose. Because believe me, I checked the shit out of these before we came out. Well, let's, uh, let's pull over right over here if we can. Might not be so smart to pull over on the hill, but maybe we can do it. And then we can take a quick look at these brakes. I'll show you these brakes. But these, these are super cheap hydraulic brakes. I got a set for 75 bucks. And I, I, I tightened this a million times. I checked it out. So I did this tire by myself too. There's like 10 screws in here. But the only issue I have right now is, is my wiring is really rigged. I just wanted to make sure it's out of the way when I'm turning. It's not rubbing into anything or pulling on the wire. But I need to figure out a better way to store this. But Ryan, my mechanic, was saying, you know, that you can do this, but make, make big loops. Like you can't fold these hydraulic lines there's pressure in there. So I, I still know this is not a good thing. It's not long-term, but I just wanted to get on the road. Uh, so yeah, these are the brakes. I'm pretty happy with uh, the performance. They feel like they're working. They feel like they grab the disc, like the right amount. Like the top of the disc is right at the very top of the caliper, if you understand what I'm saying. So it means like it's really grabbing a meaty part of the, the disc. They're cheap brakes. To me, I think it's just very cool that I can uh, that I could do a project like this by myself. Don't get me wrong. I was on the phone with Ryan for a couple of fucking hours, yelling at him. <laughs> I'm like, "You're not teaching it to me right," because it took me a while to grasp how to do this. But now we're gonna test ride it. Let's take it out for a. Uh, I, I mean, do I want? I don't know if I want it to go on sunset. But by the way, the next upgrade on this, which is coming fucking soon, is I got rear shocks for this thing, and uh, that are like won't bottom out like these do. You can hear them when they clunk. That's the rear shocks. The front shocks are, they're fun. So uh, some people who are heavier are even putting on burlier front shock. I mean, the brakes are working great. I'm, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to use both of them equally, but the right side brakes are working. So, you know, this is called the Roadrunner Pro. There's also the, uh, the Roadrunner, which is basically the smaller and, and they consider it like first generation version. And this is the Pro. They're really only similar to each other in name and general body design. This vehicle that I'm sitting on here is way different than the first generation Pro. It's not, um, this thing is just a super fast speed demon. And the Roadrunner, the Roadrunner first generation is more of like a, a super fast commuter scooter. But they're both awesome seated scooters. All right, so here we are, by the way, fucking blasting away. We're not going too fast, we're going 30 miles an hour. 
I'm only in a I'm only in third mode. I'm not gonna go fast at this thing. We're just driving it around to test it, you know. I don't want to go too far from home either. If something happens and Sarah has to pick me up or I have to walk home, I don't want it to be too far away. Where most people were just super happy with their scooter. Now the people that did have problems did post it on eMove, Roadrunner, New Users, and Mods, and that is also the point of that forum. So we can help you whatever. I mean the owner if the owner of Vore Motors is on there, Melvin, he's talking to people. He doesn't answer every question right away, but he eventually gets back to almost every serious issue, and that's that's a big thing. So you're going to get good post-sale service from Vora Motors. They're not going anywhere, but there have been some problems with like quality control issues with nuts, bolts, and screws being loose, rotors being bent. You know, the worst problems which are going to happen to any scooter, especially a first gen, is people are going to turn it on and they're going to be like, oh, it's not turning on, or there's something wrong with the electronics. And a couple people have that problem, but not too many. And I think the bigger the problem, the quicker Vora Motors is going to fix it for the customer. But it does seem like every little problem that we've had has been hashed out. There's no like everlasting threads on the forum where people are not getting solutions for their problems with the Roadrunner Pro. Uh, some problems, or maybe people have had issues with the tires, kind of the same thing issues that we had with the first uh, generation. So, uh, I mean, it is what it is. There's a brand new thing on the market. If you're buying one of these, you're buying like a brand new design and you should know that's going in. But I feel now that this has been out for a while, it's like semi-vetted, almost totally vetted. I don't think, mean, and what that means is we don't wait for Vora Motors to release another version that has the improvements that we need. You come onto the group, everything that you might want to improve on this, we know how to do it and it's not expensive. So the improvements that, what's this person doing? The improvements that most people are gonna to wanna to look at are changing the suspension. If you're above 170, 180 pounds, you're gonna to wanna, to, uh, you're probably gonna to wanna to change the rear suspension, which is literally like a $100 fix. I actually have the, uh, the replacement shocks in my apartment. I just haven't put them on yet. It's right around this uh, parking lot here. That's not a mandatory thing. You know, I've been riding around on this thing. Everything is stock, but I feel like the rear shocks could be better, and if you're heavier, people say they bottom out. And the front shocks, front shocks on this definitely bottom out too when you hit a big bump. That's not a big deal for me, I don't care about that. I, th I think the standard zoom brakes are fine, you don't need to upgrade the brakes. The thing about this scooter is when you get it, and I, I make sure I constantly post this video at the top of our page, when you get the scooter, you gotta take it out of the box and you gotta check everything. Uh, it's unfortunate that's just the way it is with uh, almost every electric scooter, even at the highest end. I have seen and been delivered very high-end vehicles where it's not like the whole thing is like sort of loose. You got to go through it and lock up all the screws and everything. I don't know why that is. Uh, sometimes it just happens in shipping, they say. All right, we're out here testing it again at speed. I love this fucking vehicle, by the way. It's, it's great. I've had it out of action for a while. It's great to have it back. I guess the brakes are working pretty good. I mean, the right ones are the new ones. The, the, the left ones are the stock. People are pretty happy. People are very happy with their pros. If, it's, if you have a problem with it and you fix it, once you dial it in and get it working perfectly, it's a super fucking fun vehicle. You get a crazy amount of vehicle for your money. I guess the most obvious thing to do out here is to go get some food. We'll go get a burrito at Dos Burritos. Oh my God, fucking roads here are so bad. Are uh, you guys ready to see some zombies? Hollywood Boulevard, just, you know, I guess I just take it for granted, like living like right down the street from here. I run less lights when I'm uh, doing leisure stuff, by the way, there's like less of a reason to run a light if I'm not doing deliveries, I'm not in a rush. Well, you know, living near man's and everything, it's like, I guess I take it for granted, a lot of people want to see it, but it's kind of lame, to be honest with you, it's like anywhere else, it's like super fucking touristy. But you guys will get a good look at it now. I got the 360 camera on, right? Yeah. My scooter's feeling pretty good. I mean, it's really about the brakes. Pretty cool to be out here on a vehicle where I, I did the front tire myself, I put on the brakes myself, I replaced the rear pads myself. The only thing I'm not good at or haven't really mastered is how to like bleed the line that well or like basically replace the oil. My mechanic, Ryan, believes more in like replacing the oil than just bleeding it. But you know, he takes, he, he, he's, he's very, uh, he's very intense with the way he fixes stuff. But you know, he's fixing like high-end vehicles for high-end customers. That's how you do it. 
Alright, so we're gonna go to, uh, fuck. We're gonna go to, um, those burritos, right? Let's get a burrito, take it home. Maybe we'll pick up snacks too at 7 Eleven. It's a little early in the day though, to like, like, it's weird. I'll be honest, my mentality is like, if I'm picking up snacks, that means it's the end of the day because I don't buy snacks until later because I don't want to eat them during the daytime, you know, like junk food. But today was a weird day. I got up really early, I worked really early, and I already feel like I've already had like a full day out here. Motherfuckers. Uh, I've already had like a full day out here. And, uh,. It's like if I start eating, like I feel like I can start eating junk food now. It feels like it's the end of my day, but it's not. But I don't want to like go home, park this fucking scooter, and then have to come back out again for junk food later. Because I'm like a junkie when it comes to my junk food, you know. I gotta have it like every day. All right, this is a good test for the Roadrunner. It's feeling pretty good. It's gonna be a major upgrade when I do the rear shocks, though. Fuck, what's this bus fucking doing? Just gonna go, motherfucker. Holy shit. Motherfucker. All right, we're close. We're closing in on uh, Los Burritos. I almost always overshoot it. It's here. It's so easy. This place is so non, the most nondescript fucking place. All right, come on. Get out of my way. Truck loaded with shit. Zombies, zombies. Zombies. My job All right. Our favorite burrito place. How's it going, man? Yes, sir. Chicken burrito, you know. All right, we got our burrito. We've been buying it from this place for like seven or eight years and it's always the same guy making it. So that's one of the reasons why I come here. <laughs> and they always do it right. All right, so let's uh, put this away. And I guess we're gonna, I don't know, do we want to ride around a little bit more or go home? Let me eyeball the front brakes before we leave. I mean, I should probably really take out my tool set and put tools on it, but I mean, what do I expect to happen? Is it just gonna like fall, you know, like, is it gonna fall apart? I mean, I really tightened it. There's no Loctite on it, but it's fucking tight. And uh, yeah, this fucking, there's noise because like this fucking wire here is banging into this. Something's banging into something. Oh, this right here, here, see? That's that, that's what you're hearing, fuck. I gotta like lock that down. I ordered some additional, I needed more zip ties. I've been using electrical tape like an idiot. All right, let's get out of here. Yeah, like I was saying before, so now the question is, is snacks. I think logistically speaking, we're pretty close to 7-Eleven <laughs> and we're gonna let logistics decide. I mean, the thing is, if I get snacks at two o'clock, I'm gonna eat this fucking burrito for lunch, and then I'm going to, I'm gonna end up fucking having snacks at like three, four o'clock in the afternoon, so I can't stop, I can't resist. Once it fits in the house, like I'm saying, my only way I control myself is not buying it. But I wanna go pick up snacks. Let's go to 7-Eleven. Oh, this motherfucker. Oh, my fucking kickstand is up. <laughs> That was my kickstand. All right, I said I wasn't gonna run any lights, but I, I, I couldn't fucking, I lied. This is just an electric scooter, a little baby electric scooter. People on scooters run lights all day. Cops never pull them over, right? I should make it a project to lock everything on this down because it does make unnecessary noise, which does make it seem cheap. It's not cheap, it's inexpensive. You get a lot for your money, what can I say? Zombies, zombie land. Uh, I'm gonna take it through this secret fucking route here that, I, that Brian recently showed me. Like, I didn't even know this was here. All my, all my years living here, check this out. We're gonna go from crazy zombie land to like a super quiet alley back here. Yeah, I didn't even know this was like a shortcut. Brian's like, let's take this shortcut over here. It's like, what shortcut? You can go right through here, look at this. I should actually probably try to set up and take some photos here if the sun is good. How's it going, buddy? Pretty good, you'll watch her for me? 
You are the best. I hate this one's hard to tie up. It's big. Thanks, dude. It's, it's always good to know the security guards. Thanks, dude. I feel pretty happy about my first time putting on the front hydraulic brakes like that and then going out and riding it and feeling, you know, like I did a good job. It feel, they feel like brakes. These are cheap brakes, so I'll check them regularly to make sure that uh, there's nothing wrong with them. But um, guys, I love the Roadrunner Pro. I highly recommend it. The guys in the forum seem to really like it a lot. If you're buying one, don't forget to use my bonus code, Electric Scooter Academy, gets you 50 bucks off and that really supports me as a content creator. I know it's only a small discount. When you use that code, you're really just saying, you know, that you appreciate all the work that I do for the channel. Oh. All right, this fucking intersection, fucking it's gonna be a standoff here for sure. Okay guys, again, thank you for your support. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave comments, ask questions. And I will see you all next time. Thank you.